Hey, it's Sarah with Loaves and Dishes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this meat lover's quiche. Before we get into today's video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon so that you'll be notified when we upload. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to dice up a shallot. You could also just use regular onion. I had a shallot lying around that needed to be used, so I decided to use it. Um, shallots and onions are really similar. I think that shallots are a little bit more mild than an onion. Um, but you know, it's just preference. You could use, you could even use a um, green onion if you had green onion lying around. Um, so just use whatever you have. You don't have to put in onion at all. You could just use onion powder. Um, it's completely up to you. And um, when I was cutting this, I accidentally cut off the root end. <laughs> and I don't recommend doing that because the root end will hold the onion or the shallot together while you're cutting it and it'll make cutting it easier. Um, if you cut it, if you cut off both ends, then uh, things get kind of squirrely. So now I am grating two cups of cheese. So the original recipe calls for two cup, one cup of cheddar cheese and one cup of pepper jack cheese. I am not a big fan of pepper jack cheese, so I am just using cheddar and, um, but you can use whatever cheese you'd like. Um, but I will say that I will say that grating the cheese is better than just buying bag cheese. Bag cheese has like a film, it has like a powdery substance on it that keeps the cheese from sticking together while it's at the grocery store. And um, it, I think it keeps things from melting, but it's up to you, whatever you've got. Um, if you've got a bag of cheese and you want to use it, use it and it'll work. It will work just fine. So now I'm cooking my bacon. I cut my bacon strips in half, so it looks like I'm cooking a lot of bacon, but it's really only four strips. And I am just giving that a good quick fry. Um, I like my bacon crispy, so I made sure that it got mostly pretty crispy um, when I was cooking it. it. Didn't take long, maybe like five to seven minutes. So, and then you just want to remove that and let it sit on a paper towel to cool off and drain off some of the excess fat. And then straight into that same pan, you're going to add about four ounces of sausage and some onion. You'll add your onion as well if you chose to put it in. <laughs> you could add other vegetables to this as well, like carrots or zucchini. Uh, you would just want to make sure that you cooked those at this stage just a little bit. Um, it is going to go in the oven for a while, but you do want to cook cook them just a little bit because baking them in a mixture, they won't cook quite the same as they would if you gave them a little, a little fry beforehand. So you just want to cook the sausage until it's just barely not pink anymore um, because, again, this is going to go in the oven for quite a while. So then you just want to turn the heat off and then remove that and set it aside so it'll cool down. And then in a bowl, you're going to crack eight eggs. And I kept getting eggshells in the bowl. I don't know what was happening with the eggs today, but um, you're going to crack eight eggs. And with egg prices the way they are, I know this seems like a lot, but this made an in, uh, like an entire quiche. I think my husband is still eating it. It's a week later. Like <laughs> it makes a lot of food. <laughs> But this recipe is really great because it's like just a really basic quiche recipe. So you could add other things, um, carrots, zucchini, peppers, um, spinach is a really popular one. Uh, you could add different cheeses like feta and that sort of thing. Um, any kind of toppings that you really like. You just want to be careful with the vegetables. I would recommend giving those a quick like par cook beforehand. So like if you're using something hard like carrots or potatoes even you want to make sure that you like that you cook this especially if you wanted to add potatoes you'd want to boil those ahead of time then you're going to add one and a half cups of milk you're going to add half a teaspoon of thyme and half a teaspoon of garlic powder i can't seem to make myself measure garlic powder ever I, you should add what your heart tells you to add <laughs> you're gonna add a little salt and pepper and then I gave that a little pre-mix um, before I add the rest of my toppings I 
had that one egg yolk that wouldn't bust. <laughs> I had to like chase it around the bowl. Okay, so then you're gonna add in your cheese. And um, you wanna chop up your bacon. Uh, it doesn't have to be super small. You just want to make sure that it's like kind of bite size, but you also want it to be small enough that it will like go through the entire quiche. So, and then you want to add your sausage and your egg and your onion mixture. You just want to make sure that you give that enough time to cool down that it's not going in super hot so that it doesn't like start to cook your eggs. And you just want to give that a really quick mix just to make sure that everything's mixed up really well. And then in a pie dish, and you wanna make sure that it's kind of a big one because this makes a big mixture and it's gonna puff up as it cooks. You're gonna unroll a, I'm just using a uh, Pillsbury pie crust and you're gonna put that in your pie dish. My dog chose right now to eat his breakfast. And he's making the most noise he possibly can because he knows that I'm trying to work. <laughs> I didn't try to flute the edges of the pie crust or anything this time. I think I've just about given up on making pie crust pretty. Um, I just don't care. <laughs> if you care and if you can flute the edges of your pie crust, that's great. And I'm so happy for you. But I just was like, I'm... You know, I can't be bothered to mess with that. <laughs> Plus, the the quiche, like, puffed up enough that you, like, couldn't even really see the sides, so. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to, you can flute the edges and make it look really pretty. And you're going to bake it at 400 for 40 to 45 minutes. And this, when it came out, it, like, really puffed up like a souffle. You just want to make sure the middle is not jiggly. It'll be, like, a lightly jiggle. And that's it. Thanks for watching.